Welcome to Know Your Universe, the series right here on the Comic Storian channel where we take some of your favorite superheroes or video games or movies and just basically break them down so that you understand who these characters are and what they've done in their various properties, such as the comic book line. Now, the character of Miles Morales is the star of the Into the Spider-Verse movie. Well, one of the stars in this movie. And because of that, a lot of people are going to be wondering, who is Miles Morales? As big of a deal as he is in the comic books when Brian Michael Bendis made him, I got a feeling he's going to be an even bigger deal now that he's in a movie which primarily features him. Anyway, let's tell you a little bit about him. And if you enjoy this type of video right here at Comic Storian, let us know by giving this video a like and giving us a subscription after you've watched the video. I'm not asking for it up front, I'm just telling you up front. If you like this kind of thing, let us know. We would really appreciate it. But let me prove to you what we do here. Created by Brian Michael Bendis in 2011, the character of Miles Morales was originally conceived to take over the role of Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe after the death of Peter Parker, and he made his first appearance in Ultimate Comics Fallout number 4. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Miles was 13 years old when he received spider powers. You see, his uncle, Aaron Davis, had broken into the Oscorp lab and stolen some property. Unknown to him, a genetically engineered spider had slipped into his bag during the robbery. When Miles went to go visit his uncle, he was bitten by the spider. Now, like Peter Parker, Miles gained super strength, agility, spider sense, and the ability to stick to surfaces. Because it was a different spider, he also gained a camouflage ability and bioelectric powers, which enabled him to enhance his strength even further, as well as create a type of webbing. Unlike other people who were bitten by spiders, such as Spider-Man or Spider-Gwen, Miles had no interest in using his powers for either financial gain or fighting crime, instead choosing to live his life normally since his world already had a Spider-Man. After Peter Parker's death at the hands of Norman Osborn, Miles felt guilty that he didn't try to help out, even with his super abilities. This guilt pushed him into becoming a superhero, and he became Spider-Man to uphold the original's legacy. Of course, not everyone has a superhero costume lying around, so Miles' first leap into the superhero world was wearing the original Spider-Man as a Halloween costume. Miles' first supervillain was the awesomely named Kangaroo, so named because he's from Australia and hops? Or has a front pouch? I don't know, let's move on. And he was later confronted by the ultimate Spider-Woman who informed him that wearing a dead hero's costume is just plain tacky. Her opinion changes after Miles helps defeat Electro and she gives the young kid her blessing, but he does need a different suit. Clad in his own spider suit, Miles begins his crime fighting career, which doesn't start off so well since he has no real skills in crime fighting. Not everyone is born as a combat specialist, you know. Luckily, Miles' best friend, Genki, has footage of the original Spider-Man fighting Dr. Octopus and suggests that Miles study it and try to learn how to fight. Crime fighting is tough for young Miles. He has no web shooters and a fear of heights, which makes crawling and leaping off of the buildings a little nerve-wracking. Luckily, he gets some on-the-job training in the form of the supervillain Omega Red and discovers that some of his new abilities, such as spider sense and bioelectric shock powers, can do pretty well. Eventually, through the joys of the multiverse, Miles actually meets Peter Parker when he travels to the Ultimate Universe. Learning what he can do from this version of Spider-Man, Miles is given Peter Parker's blessing before he returns to his own universe. This Peter Parker is from 616. As a gift, he's also given his first web shooters when Aunt May, Gwen Stacy, and Mary Jane approach him and also give him their blessings. Oh, it's just so sweet. The Ultimate Universe is a lot like the MCU, with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury being much more involved in heroes' lives. After his initial rough start in the crime-fighting business, Miles Morales is approached by Captain America, who wanted him to stand down and stop superheroing. Instead, Miles joins the Ultimates, the Avengers of the Ultimate Universe. Kind of makes sense, right? Ultimate Universe, they're the Ultimates. So that he can then be trained by Cap and the other members. While on the Ultimates, Miles fought in the Civil War that took place in the Ultimate Universe's United States. Now, most heroes have a catalyst that propels them into becoming a hero, some sort of event. For the original Spider-Man, that was the death of Uncle Ben. For Miles, it seemed to be the death of Peter Parker. A second catalyst almost stopped him from being a hero forever. After the Civil War in America, the Venom symbiote returned to New York, looking for the new Spider-Man. Believing that it was Miles' father, it attacked him and put him in the hospital. Eventually, Miles confronted the symbiote outside of the hospital and nearly died in the fight. He was saved when his mother arrived, distracting the creature with a simple firearm. Using his bioelectric pulse powers, aka his Venom Punch, he managed to defeat Venom, but not before his mother was mortally wounded. Dying in his arms, she reveals that she knew that Miles was Spider-Man all along and was very proud of him. 
She tells him not to tell his father with her final words. These events would cause Miles to destroy his costume, swearing to never be Spider-Man again. But it's comics, and after a year, Miles is convinced to once again become Spider-Man. <gasps> Didn't see that coming, did you? Then there's some more multiversal stuff. When Galactus from 616 comes to the Ultimate Universe to try and destroy it, Miles joins the Ultimates again, and he goes to Earth 616 to help Tony Stark figure out how to stop Galactus. They do, and the Ultimates get disbanded. But then Miles helps the young Ultimates. Oh, and then more multiverse stuff happens involving the Spider-Verse event. Miles joins the Spider-Army, defeating the Inheritors. For now, dun dun dun, moving on. Following the Spider-Verse event, Miles finds Peter Parker alive and well in the Ultimate Universe. Except he's not. It's actually a clone of Peter. And after working alongside Clone Peter to defeat the returned Norman Osborn, Clone Peter gives Miles his blessing and I guess goes about his life as Clone Peter. Uh, next, it turns out that Miles' girlfriend's parents are Hydra agents and kidnap him to experiment on him with Doctor Doom. And well, that doesn't work, and it turns out that Miles' bioelectric abilities are super strong when he's threatened. Then the universe ends, bummer, kind of blows up, crashing into another universe. But Miles actually survived the end of the multiverse by stowing away on a raft created by the Cabal. Awakening on Battleworld, working alongside 616 Peter Parker, Miles learned that the source of God Doom's powers was Molecule Man. When the man was hungry, Miles offered him a cheeseburger that had been in his pocket since the multiverse ended. Like three weeks. Ew. After the defeat of Doom and the destruction of Battleworld, Miles awoke on Earth 616. Because he offered Molecule Man the burger, his life had been saved. Miles' life remained the same on Earth 616. His father was there and his mother had never died and all of his friends had also been brought there. Learning to live in this new world, Miles started to be trained by Peter Parker, joining the Avengers for a brief time. Miles then took part in the second superhero civil war, siding with Tony Stark. At its conclusion, Miles became disillusioned to the heroes of the world and their constant fighting. Along with a few other teenage heroes, Miles founded the Champions, a team of young heroes who haven't spent years fighting supervillains and actually believe that they can make the world a better place. Then Captain America became a Nazi. Well, Hydra, same, same. During the Secret Empire event, Miles and the other champions acted as an underground resistance under the leadership of Black Widow. After her death, the champions were instrumental in defeating Hydra. Miles continues to work alongside the champions to this day. He'll be returning to his own solo book starting in December and will star in the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie in theaters in December, which is why we're doing this video. As a matter of fact, I believe this video came out the day that movie went out. So either way, you understand what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed our Miles Morales Know Your Universe. We do those kinds of things right here at Comic Story and on a regular basis, telling you about your favorite characters, your favorite video games, your favorite movies. We give you all the information so that you understand what happened in your favorite comic books and who these characters are. Well, we here at Comic Story and got an amazing opportunity and Dan got to go and interview the actors and actresses of the Into the Spider-Verse movie. So I hope you guys enjoy as we are now going to bring you the interview that Dan conducted with the actor who played Miles Morales and the actor who played Spidey. Uh, so before this uh, movie, what was your guys' history with comic books? I, mean, I, didn't, I, w I didn't have a huge history. My brother was a big comic book guy. Uh, and so for me, obviously, I've known of Spider-Man, I've known of Peter Parker, but I had never done a really deep dive until uh, this movie. Uh, for me, I, I knew that the comic books ex existed, but I didn't really read them much. I watched the cartoons. You know, any cartoons that came on, I was pretty much down to watch and learn and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that would be my... But my you had a cool thing with Miles in those cartoons. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, well, the first time I saw Miles... Um, I it was like an earlier he made an appearance on like a Disney show or something and I I looked up and I seen this black Spider Man and I'm like oh this man's black and I look in the mirror real quick and I'm like wait like that looks exactly like me <laughs> like I had the low cut the buzz cut and I'm not just talking about representation like he's black and I'm black I'm talking about like the fact that his facial features. Looked, it's, it's like somebody took a photo of me and they drew it and animated it and put it on this show. So I always felt like someone saw me and I, and I am Miles Morales. You get me? I always felt that way. And uh, but I, I, I love Spider Man, the character. I watched all the Spider Man movies, um, you know, as like from 2000 forward, maybe, you know. And um, uh, yeah, I'm honored to be for, for that to come full circle the way it has. I mean. I was writing that down in my journal. I am Miles Morales, I am Spider-Man, while filming the movie Dope. So what kind of preparation did you guys do to get ready for this role? 
I trusted in, you know, Chris and Phil and Bobby and Rodney and Peter um, and really talking to them. You know, we had, they had the script, so we would do each scene and before everything we would do, we'd kind of talk it out with them. But those guys were the guys, they were, you know, really protective of these characters in this movie. And so it felt as if our job was to come in and try to bring as much as we could and they really guided the ship. So I didn't come in with a million questions and theories. It was more, I wanted to hear their take on it and then I wanted to do as best I could to honor that. Same, you know, I, I really just counted on their knowledge on uh, what we were working on. Because like I said, I my connection to Miles is just that he looked exactly like me the first time that I saw him. And in, in that situation is like, I would love to be playing this character, period, you know? And moving forward years later, you know, I'm writing it down in my journal as a list of things that I want to accomplish in my life. And it was the first thing that had come to life, you know? Um, and I'm counting on Chris and Phil and Rodney, Bob and Peter, you know, and their love for what they're doing and the details of it, you know, of everything. We, somebody brought up earlier about, about the diner. I didn't even know that had like some other significant meaning to the story, but they did, you know? So just counting on them and listening to them is a, is a very uh, important thing to execute in the movie that we, we all uh, have seen and loved and hopefully you guys see and love. So uh, what were your favorite scene or favorite scenes from the movie? I like the diner scene. The diner scene was cool. One of my favorites uh, at the beginning uh, was when Miles is like trying to find out like he's about to take that first leap. We all remember Toby, you know, you know, doing that. But Miles, he goes up there. He goes right back down. <laughs> he said, listen, we don't do that. Well, I'm not about to try to jump across the... the... <laughs> Come on now. You know, Come just on. like hearing a scary sound and going to the sound. We don't... You know, <laughs> that's not going to happen in in, in, uh, in this version of a scary movie. All right. <laughs> okay. But um, anyway, <laughs> uh, that was one favorite moment. There's so many. When uh, another good one is... Uh, we were on the bus. I was with Gwen, and I'm like, trying, I'm like, well, we could be friends, and you know, trying to be smooth, but not being as smooth as I'm capable of being, but being miles smooth. You get me? Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! <man. laughs> and uh, and Peter uh, is over there. He's asleep, but he's not asleep. That was a kind of touching moment. I feel like we all became a family yeah. in that scene. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many. But. That's right. Besides your characters. Who was your favorite Spider Person, excluding the traditional Spider Man? Well, I like the character Gwen because she's pretty badass. But if I was going to play a Spider Man other than Miles Morales, I, it would be Spider Noir. I hate to take up two characters like that. <laughs> <laughs> Making it hard on me. I like Spider Gwen a lot. I like that. Uh, Young women are going to have somebody who's wearing the mask who, you know, is their gender. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and I thought her character was nice and punk rock, and I like that attitude. So both of you came from mostly on-screen acting. What was it like doing voice acting? I thought it was great. Um, it was really nice to have the main emphasis be on the voice and the actual delivery of things, as opposed to the look and the lighting and the set design. Because when we went to work, you know, we weren't working with the animation, we were just working with the directors. And so if we didn't hit something the way they imagined it while listening, we mm -hmm. did it again. So there felt to be a real purity about the acting where it wasn't about anything except for the performance. And as somebody who doesn't like going through hair and makeup and as somebody who doesn't care that much about fashion, believe it or not, uh, it was really fun for me.